I am very happy to teach you how to make your own DIY cleaning products at home using vinegar, dish soap, baking soda, hydrogen peroxide, rubbing alcohol, all the things for pennies. But what do I always tell you? I always say that there's a mix. There's DIY products you can make, but then there are specialty products that you need to buy. Sometimes store-bought products really can do the job better. And why waste your time trying to perfect something that's already available in store. So in this video, I'm gonna take you on a tour throughout my house and show you some of the store-bought products that I use room by room. Where there are tiles, there's grout. Where there is grout, there are stains. And I know that this is something that drives people in the Clean My Space community absolutely crazy. And over the years, we've had many different ways in which you could clean grout that we have shared, but never have we shared something about sealing grout. This is also something I've known about for a long time, but I'm a lazy person. I don't necessarily love the idea of having to seal my grout but I have the product because if you want to avoid stains in your grout, you can seal them. Sealing kind of creates like a clear gloss over the grout so that it is no longer porous or absorbent. That way, soap scum, dirt, stains, marks can't actually get into the grout. Now, this does take a little bit of preparation and a little bit of time, but if clean grout lines are important to you, you can definitely pick up a product like this carve out an hour or two, it'll be worth the effort. Here's a mouthful of a product that will solve a very troublesome issue in any home. It's called Concrobium Mold Control. I have talked about this stuff for years. It comes in many different applications from a spray bottle to this canister to a duo pack. I don't know guys, there are all kinds of different application methods. Either way, the reason Concrobium is great is because it works. It gets rid of mold and mildew. So here in the bathroom, you might see some starting to build up over here. That's if you're not ventilating well, if you're not using a squeegee after every shower. You might also see this build, uh, mold and mildew building up on windowsills. You might see it in your kitchen. You might see it outdoors. There are so many different places where you could be using Concrobium around the house. So many people would lean on using bleach to get rid of mold and mildew. And while that's effective, you can use something like this that is odor free, has much less in terms of harsh chemicals in it and gets you great results. Just make sure that you follow package instructions. BKF, its wrap name or barkeeper's friend is a product that we have been talking about for years. Now, if I could get Bon Ami, here in Canada, I would also tell you that Bon Ami is a great product. Either way, these powdered cleansers are gentler than their bleach-based counterparts. You can use them in a lot of different places in your home, uh, and they work really, really well without scratching. Uh, you can use Barkeeper's Friend in the kitchen, you can use it in the bathroom, outdoors. It's got so many different uses, but essentially it'll kind of scrape off anything that's built up, but without scratching the surface. So it's great for porcelain finishes. It's great for, I mean, guys, you know what? I'm not even gonna go into it because I have a whole video on Barkeeper's Friend. I'll link it for you down below, but having a can of it or a bottle, whichever uh, delivery method you prefer is a great thing to have at home. It deals with a lot of trouble. When it comes to disinfecting, you want to make sure that you're selecting a disinfectant that is safe to use on the surface and in the space that you're looking to disinfect. We don't use disinfectant too much around this house, but certainly in the bathroom and in the kitchen would be two places where we would consider using it. The same goes for point of contact. Uh, Microband 24 is actually a pretty good product to use in the bathroom, but it isn't safe to use on food prep surfaces. We, we did a sponsored program with them a while ago. We have a bunch of their stuff here. It's been working pretty well, so that's what I have in my current rotation for a bathroom disinfectant. There are lots of finishes and fixtures around your home that need to be cleaned very specifically so that they don't get ruined. Fiberglass is one of those surfaces. Now the way you know it's fiberglass, of course you could remember what you installed at the time, or you can just use your hands to kind of feel and tap. If it feels plasticky and when you tap it, you kind of get like a plasticky reverb, it's fiberglass. If you tap it and it sounds sort of tinny, then it is not fiberglass, you're dealing with something else. So 
In the case of fiberglass, it is very delicate and it can scratch. It also gets these stains and marks that can be difficult to get out. They're not soap scum. In fact, I don't even know where these came from, but they're difficult. So uh, a great product to have on hand is something like this. It's called Peak and it is safe to use to clean fiberglass. You can actually use this to clean a lot of other surfaces too. The package will explain that, but I specifically picked it up to deal with some of the challenges that I have here in a fiberglass tub. Now, normally when I clean the tub, I'm just using something very gentle, dish soap, vinegar, water, a sponge or a microfiber cloth, and it takes care of this tub, but these stains I can't otherwise get rid of. So having a tube of something like this will help keep your fiberglass looking great for a long time. Now you certainly can make your own toilet bowl cleaner, but if you're someone who just wants the quick and easy, you can pick up a bottle of toilet bowl cleaner that's specifically designed to deal with the unique odors, stains, and buildup that happens in a toilet. When I pick up a toilet bowl cleaner, I'm always looking for an eco-friendly brand, something that is gentler, uh, naturally derived, made with uh, you know less harsh product. This one's actually the Walmart brand. I am actually not brand loyal to toilet bowl cleaners, um, but that's the way I shop for them. There's fish and chips vinegar, there's salad dressing vinegar, and then there's cleaning vinegar. Cleaning vinegar is anywhere between six and 10% acidic acid. You will see that listed right there on the label. This one is 10%. And this is so important to have at home because it cuts through grease. We all know how well vinegar can clean, but cleaning vinegar is like, vinegar on steroids. It works really well. So if you've got heavy duty soap scum on tiles or glass, uh, if you've got a really heavily stained mirror, anything like that that's kind of driving you nuts that you don't want to have to work too hard on, cleaning vinegar can save the day. Just make sure that you ventilate the area well and protect your hands. It is an acid, so even though regular vinegar is fine to consume, you actually don't want to get this on your body and you don't want to breathe it in. This is a newer product that I have found, but it is one that I am really impressed with. It's Folex and it is not exactly a laundry product, but I thought this was the most appropriate place to talk about it. Uh, it's an instant carpet spot remover. It kind of works like magic. You spray it onto a spot, you either rub it in with your finger or a little cleaning toothbrush, and the spot lightens and disappears before your eyes. Now, as with any type of stain or spot remover for upholstery or carpet, you want to test in a hidden area first just to make sure there aren't any major issues. But in my experience, I haven't had that with Folex. Uh, I think it works really well and it's something that you should just have tucked away in the event there's a stain, you can kind of zap it on and get rid of it. One of the cool things about this product is it's what they call non-magnetic. And what that means is that it doesn't leave any sticky residue behind on your surface. If there's a sticky residue, that actually attracts dirt and darkens the spot that you were trying to clean. So that's kind of a nice thing about this. They also say that it is CFC and petroleum free. It's been around for over 40 years and has like insane reviews online. So yeah, I keep some of this at home. A granite sealer or a natural stone sealer is a really important thing to have in high traffic areas where your natural stone is, whether it's a countertop or a floor, whether it's in your kitchen or your bathroom. These are really great products because what they do is provide an invisible barrier so that your stone surfaces don't become absorbent to stains. And when you stain a natural stone surface, they are really tough to clean. You need to bring on the pros and things get real expensive. So having a stone sealer like this around the house is very useful. It's something that you can do every few months or so. Your product will explain to you exactly how frequently to do the treatment and also how to do the treatment. It is way less overwhelming than it sounds, but because we have granite kitchen counters and marble countertops in the bathrooms, this is an important product for us to have here at the house. What I will show you is my uh, guest bathroom where we did not use a sealant and there are now stains. Even the most diligent people can't keep food and hair from going down their sink, whether it's here in the kitchen or in the bathroom. And that's why I think having a drain opener at home is important and one that is safe or safer. Cause we know these are, you know, tougher chemicals. They have a big job to do. 
So the product that I use is called Green Gobbler, and if you look at the little logo there, the guy says it all. He's very active. So what you get in this box is a three pack of powder. You basically dump this pack down the drain that is clogged. You put a little bit of hot water on top, just enough to make sure all of the product is dissolved. You leave it for about 30 minutes, and then you pour one or two kettles full of boiling water down the drain. And this opens everything up. I have been really impressed with the results of Green Gobbler. I've been using it for years. I actually don't like having the harsher drain openers at home. And one of the big mistakes that people make with drain openers is they don't get the results they want the first time, even with a very, very heavy duty product, probably because they're not reading the label properly. Then they dump more stuff down the drain and that's when gases get created and that's when poison control gets the phone calls. So what I would recommend is pick up a product, read it, understand how it works and go to town. Something that is critical to have at home to deal with greasy, grimy surfaces, odors, and stains is an enzyme cleaner. Now, if you're in the US, Back Out by BioClean is a definite favorite. And if you're in Canada, you can probably get your hands on a container of pink solution. Uh, it has a different package now. It goes to show how long this stuff lasts for. But an enzyme cleaner is useful not only in the kitchen, but in the bathroom or other dirty areas of your home. The way that enzyme cleaners work is they are applied to a surface. They need to be wet to work, but they're essentially like good bacteria. Kind of think of them like probiotics. And what they do is they start to eat away at the greasy, grimy stuff, whatever is posing a cleaning challenge to you, you give it a little bit of time, then you come over, you wipe it off, you don't have to do any of the heavy lifting because the enzymes have done that work for you. What I love about enzyme cleaners is they are vegetable based. So they oftentimes don't have strong smells, they work really, really well, and they don't have harsh chemicals. These, uh, I mean, I use these to remove stains, odors, greasy stuff on backsplashes, cleaning overhead exhausts, oven doors. They have so many uses here in the kitchen and then throughout the house. I mean, we have videos on enzyme cleaners. I'll link them for you down below, but I think it is critical to have a good container of enzyme cleaner wherever you live. A dirty dishwasher is a useless dishwasher and that's why maintaining it on a regular basis is important. Not only cleaning out the filter if yours can be manually removed, but also cleaning the inside. And while you can do a vinegar cycle and a baking soda cycle, you can also use a dishwasher tablet. And I do use these from time to time and I find that they actually work pretty well. Um, the reason I like the Afresh one is because it also does bear the EPA Safer Choice label. So I always look for that when I'm looking for cleaning products. And it's pretty easy to use. It's also recognized by a lot of the major appliance manufacturers. You basically open up the tablet, throw it in your machine. Your machine should be empty. Run it through on a hot cycle. You're done. Now, when it comes to what I use inside the dishwasher, I use Cascade uh, Action Packs. I like them because they have a bit of Dawn, they have a bit of Rinse Aid, they got detergent. What I don't love about this product, I don't love the packaging. And honestly, I would like something that does have an EPA Safer Choice label, but something that is really effective. I like that it is recognized by all of the major appliance brands, but I'd love to know in the comments down below if you have found a dishwasher detergent that works incredibly well without all the harsh stuff. So let me know. Laundry detergent is one of the most used cleaning products in a home and I am always testing new products that are available. What I specifically look for, I look for less ingredients, I look for products that are free of dyes, scents, additives, unnecessary stuff. I mean, laundry, you know, we wear clothes, they're so close to our body, we smell everything. So that's why I always like to find products that are gentler and better for us and the environment. I also like to look for products that have reduced packaging. So I look for EPA Safer Choice labels, Leaping Bunny programs, that kind of thing. And I'm always trying different things out so I have different products in rotation at any given time. Right now I've got Tide Free and Gentle in this box, I've got True Earth, and I've got Molly's Suds. 
My go-to stain remover is Puracy. It's got six different types of enzymes in there to deal with different types of stains. Uh, I love the story behind this brand and I remember trying it on a whim a few years ago and there's almost no stain that I've thrown at this that has not come out. I am so impressed with this product. It's also naturally derived, plant-based, non-toxic. It's free and clear. It's made in the US and I'm just about out of it. So I got to place a reorder, but uh, I've been very impressed with this. What I do find with stain removers, particularly in the natural realm, is you might have to treat a stain a couple of times, but be persistent and you'll see your stain will come right out. It smells amazing. And that's because I know how to take care of it. I always leave the door open between washes. And because this is a through way, it's a constant argument between Chad and I. He like, passive aggressively closes it and then I passive aggressively open it. It's like a whole thing in our house. But that's why this machine doesn't smell. Our gasket doesn't have any mold in it. Things are good in the washing machine. The other thing I do fairly regularly is maintain it. And I use an, a fresh tablet to do that as well. Now you can pick up gels that you can add into the detergent cup, but I find this is pretty easy. First I wipe out the machine make sure that there's nothing you know sticking around in there especially now that we have a three-year-old oh my gosh you find some random stuff in that drum so remove that first throw in one of these tablets put your machine onto either the tub clean cycle or the hottest possible setting and your washing machine will smell better and it will actually perform better now they recommend of course because it's like a product that they always want to sell they recommend that you do this once a month. I really think you can get away with doing it far less, maybe once a quarter, uh, but it will make a difference. A go-to product I've had at home for probably the last 15 years is OxyClean VSR Versatile Stain Remover. It's a powdered formula. You can use it to pre-soak something by sort of filling up your laundry basin, putting in a scoop and adding stuff to soak overnight, or you can add a scoop to your wash. This is really good if you have, say, a load of really, you know, smelly stuff, stuff that's stained, or if there's just like a situation where your kid comes home from daycare and you're like, wow, I, I don't even know if we're ever going to be able to revive this item, but we're just going to pull out a Hail Mary and see what happens, this would be the Hail Mary. So I think having a container of this at home is very useful. It's not something, you know, maybe I replace this once a year. I don't pull it out all the time, but when I do pull it out, OxyClean can be used in so many different ways around the house and it never fails. And that brings me to the topic of pumice stones because these are quite popular in the cleaning world and they are all over the social media and people swear by them they say they solve all the cleaning problems but do they and are they the best choice let's deep dive into pumice stones today and find out if indeed these are the right cleaning tools that you should be using and if so on what surfaces the way that you clean with pumice is always the same. You're going to wet your stone very thoroughly. You want to soak it for a few minutes before you use it in water. And you can then apply the pumice stone to the surface uh, the same way that you would use a sponge or think about like an eraser at school after you really messed up a math problem. Now, you don't want to press too hard because this is an abrasive tool and you don't want to scratch, but the idea is that you kind of want to gently graze the surface. You're going to work in kind of a circular motion and you're going to stay very focused on the mess at hand. So the technique is always the same across a variety of different surfaces, finishes and fixtures that you're going to be using it on. What really matters is testing it first and understanding pumice's limitations. I would classify a pumice stone as a heavy duty cleaning tool. So I would use it on areas that can tolerate such a thing. Like for example, barbecue grills, the top of your oven, the grates there, not a glass cooktop, but the top of your oven in terms of the grates, the inside of a non self cleaning oven and Pyrex dishes. It can also work on certain pieces of cookware, but you always have to test in an inconspicuous area first. So why do people go absolutely bonkers for pumice? It's because it works. It works really well. It's an abrasive. So if you watch other Clean My Space videos, you know that I love baking soda. 
partially because it's an abrasive product, but it is much less abrasive than a pumice stone. So where baking soda can't do the job, pumice can. Of course, there's a flip side to that, which is you have to be careful where you use it and mindful of the surfaces that you choose to use it on. But when it works, it works. Now at this juncture, you might be saying to yourself or to me on the screen, hey Melissa, I've seen so many people use this online to clean their running shoes, their toilet, their sink, their glass shower, their tiles. Why aren't you talking about that? Well, my friends, that's because I like to play it safe. I don't like to see things ruined. And like I always do, I do tons of research and I like to advise you on how to be safe and how to be efficient and effective. And just because something works on a certain surface doesn't mean that it is the best choice. So when I see people cleaning glass shower doors or tiles or their toilets or porcelain sinks with these things, it's great that it's working, but it's not necessarily the best choice, especially if you check with the experts in those particular fields. In fact, they might even advise against you using a pumice stone because it can ruin the surface. So always take what you see and read online with a grain of salt or stone. I'm not trying to scare you here. I just want you to be aware of what could potentially happen if you use pumice in the wrong space. And what it is, is micro scratching. So let's say you have a toilet and you're like, it's got hard water stains and rust and a toilet ring and I really need to solve the problem. If you don't care about this toilet, if you're like, whatever, the toilet's the toilet and it's not like a $3,000 toilet that can do your taxes as well and you're not planning on replacing that toilet, okay, you can use a pumice stone, but be aware that it will cause micro scratches which are scratches that you actually can't see. But over time, these microscopic scratches can start to hold on to dirt, therefore making the surface look dirtier. And it's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. The only way that those surfaces will be able to get clean in the future is if you use a pumice stone. So will they get clean? Uh-huh. But you'll just have to be aware that they'll be scratched and you'll have to use this going forward. So if you've decided that you're going to use pumice, that's great. Here are a few things that you need to know. We've already talked about testing it in an inconspicuous area first, keeping it wet and only using it on surfaces that are deemed safe. You also want to keep in mind that because the stone is by nature porous, you will never be able to disinfect it. So if you have a toilet pumice, it stays the toilet pumice. You also want to make sure that when you're done using the pumice stone that you wipe and dry the surface well. That's because this pumice, it leaves like a fine kind of grit behind afterward and you might see that or feel that texture. And while it might become totally addictive because you're going to get great results, try not to use pumice all the time. It really should be kind of one of the last resort cleaning tools in my opinion. Cleaning pros mostly have dirty secrets, but a clean secret, a cleaning tool secret that they have is super fine steel wool. This is something that cleaning professionals love. Window cleaning professionals love them. Car cleaning professionals love them. Steel wool, super fine steel wool, which looks like 0000 steel wool on a package, is super fine so that it doesn't scratch the surface, but it is abrasive enough to remove the stuff that you don't want. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how the pros use steel wool so that you can be more efficient and cost-effective at home with your cleaning. And I'll also give you some of the precautions so that you know how to use it properly. Like sandpaper, steel wool is graded on a scale. The one that we're using today is super fine and I'm just looking at the back of the package here where they have all of the different things listed. Super fine has four zeros, you will always see that. That is the one we're talking about. Don't use any other grade for any of the stuff we're talking about today because I cannot guarantee the results. This stuff can be really abrasive. That's why it's used in all sorts of different home and industrial and commercial applications. So it's very important that you're using the right grade. The other thing to keep in mind is anything that I talk about today, it is really important to make sure that you test on an inconspicuous, which means a hidden area first. 
That way, if for whatever reason, the finish that I'm demonstrating isn't the exact same as the finish you have at home, you'll know if steel wool is okay to use on that finish as well. Here are a few precautionary tips off the top because I think it's important to know how to use it safely before you actually get into using it. The thing to know about steel wool is that it's sort of like steel cotton candy. So it's super fine floss, if you will, but it's still metal and it's still sharp and there's still things we have to know about. So obviously I'm handling it right now for the video with bare hands. When I'm actually cleaning with it, you will see I'm wearing gloves. It's also really important to keep it away from your eyes, your nose and your mouth because you don't want it getting into the system. After you finish using it, you might notice that there are some shavings or little leave behinds, complements of your steel wool. So just make sure that you wipe that up. You don't want it getting anywhere where it shouldn't. The other thing to keep in mind is that steel wool can rust if it's wet because it is steel. So make sure that you're drying it effectively if you're going to reuse it and always check it to make sure that there's no rust before using it again because rust can actually scratch and do the exact opposite of what you're trying to accomplish when you use steel wool. And one more thing, it's very flammable. So a tip that we're not covering today is that this is a great fire starter. Therefore, if you're storing it somewhere, make sure that it's safe and not anywhere that you could possibly start a fire. Okay, so now that you know all the don'ts, we're gonna get into the do's. There's a school of thought that you can use steel wool dry and there's a school of thought that you can use steel wool damp or you spray a little bit of product or water onto a surface and then use the steel wool to buff it. I would recommend that you test both, they both work. So whatever floats your boat, whatever gets your stains off, that's what I recommend you doing. The first use for steel wool we're going to cover is glass. Now I know what you're thinking, that seems counterintuitive because you're using something that's like scratchy and metal to clean glass, but believe it or not, it does work. So I'll give you a few examples of how this stuff really kicks butt. If you have a windshield and you've done, if you have a car, therefore you would have a windshield and you've done a long drive in the summer and you get sap and dead bugs on your windshield and you don't know how to clean it, steel wool is the way to go. Simply glove up and start buffing that dirty area and you will see that your glass becomes super clean. Another glass area that can be absolutely ridiculous to clean sometimes is a glass shower door or panel. If you find that yours is covered in soap scum and hard water buildup, steel wool is a great way to combat that issue. Again, you're just gonna take a piece, start using a buffing circular motion, and you will see that any of that stuff comes off with ease. Just make sure that you rinse really well. Superfine steel wool is famous for removing rust. So if you have rusty garden tools or hand tools, even rusty scissors or knives, patio furniture, anything that could possibly be rusted, superfine steel wool can easily get that rust off with a few simple buffing motions. All that said, the item that you are buffing cannot be coated or painted because that is a whole other can of worms that we're not getting into today. Chrome is another surface that can really benefit from being cleaned by superfine steel wool. Reason being, it's got this nice high luster finish, but at times it can be really challenging to keep nice and shiny, or if you have chrome on your vehicle, whether it's a car or a motorcycle, you might notice that your chrome gets rusted. So again, all you have to do is take your superfine steel wool, give it a quick buff, whether it's your exhaust tailpipe, your rims, or even your faucet, if you notice there's hard water buildup, you'll see that superfine steel wool restores chrome to its original shiny luster. Every now and then you might get a scuff mark from a shoe or you might get crayon on wallpaper. While those sound rather specific, they can be very challenging to clean if you happen to encounter them. So if you do encounter one of those two specific cleaning challenges, superfine steel wool can help you. On floors, if they're vinyl or porcelain or ceramic, any hard floor surface that's not hardwood I would or natural stone, I would say you can use your superfine steel wool to quickly buff out those scuff marks. Frankly, you could test in an inconspicuous area on hardwood or natural stone. Personally, I wouldn't be comfortable with it, but hey, it's your house, you do you. Now, the other thing I mentioned was wallpaper. If you have wallpaper and little ones and they like to color on the walls, which we all know that happens, 
super fine steel wool will definitely be able to buff out that crayon for you. That is a good time savings. If you've ever seen our video on how to clean silver, you know how stark the difference can be when you have dirty silver and you see it become nice and clean with this very easy fix. Well, super fine steel wool can do the exact same thing for brass. If you have any brass fixtures, whether they're plumbing fixtures or door uh, accessories, you know, handles, drawer pulls, doorknobs, that kind of thing, that have sort of lost their original luster, or even uh, a brass accessory kicking around the house that just needs some life brought back to it, you can give it a nice buff with your super fine steel wool and you will see that old dingy looking brass will look brand new. Don't freak out. I know what you're thinking, that's a lot of cleaning tools. But in this video, we are gonna talk about essential cleaning tools and how in each category to pick the right one for your home so that you don't have to feel overwhelmed and you actually have the right stuff to get the job done. Let's start off with the wild world of brushes because I'm sure you've seen tons of them and I wanna talk through which ones are which, what they're for, what you need, what you don't need. This one you need, this is a toilet bowl brush. Now this is our prop toilet bowl brush, don't worry, it's not the one we actually use or else it wouldn't be on my kitchen counter. These are important to have because you wanna make sure that you can get your toilet scrubbed clean. Now, of course, there are a variety of different ones that are available. I actually have my preferred products linked for you down below. It'll take you to an Amazon list and some other links. It's not available on Amazon. But basically, the reason I like this one is because it's got really durable nylon bristles, which are safe to use on a vitreous surface like a toilet. Vitreous, by the way, means like a porous toilet, bathroom, sink type surface, just so you know. Because these bristles can be scrubby without scratching, it means that they're gonna be able to lift off that dirt, that buildup that you see in the toilet on a regular basis. Now, sometimes you'll see them that, you know, they have like an extra bristle kind of pointing up, kind of like a finger pointing up. Those are really good because they'll allow you to get under the rim. Uh, and if you notice that the area under your toilet rim gets particularly dirty, that could be a good addition on the tool for you. Otherwise, uh, you know, this shape is just fine. And the reason I think this one is cool is because it's kind of open air, open air for your toilet bowl brush. Um, so it kind of goes back into this little bowl. And then what's cool is you can kind of flip it around and no one needs to see the TBB toilet bowl brush. This over here, this wackadoodle looking brush cleans a couple things in the house and it's about appliance maintenance. This can clean the coils at the back of your refrigerator, removing dust as well as your dryer um, lint trap. And the reason why this is important is because it allows your appliances to flow. This long mascara wand can kind of dip in and swing around and pick up any dust or build up that could be preventing airflow from those two appliances. If you notice that your fridge is loud, it's probably because the coils are dusty. So you would pull it out and you would use this or a vacuum with brush attachment to get rid of that dust. If you notice that your dryer has a lot of buildup in the lint trap uh, and every time you pull it out, there's like remaining dust in the little slot, that's when you would wanna get this brush and give it a good cleaning. It takes, I don't know, 10 little pumps of the brush and then you vacuum up the debris and you'll notice that your dryer actually works much more efficiently. This is a brush I've labeled with painter's tape. It says for water bottle, no toilet. And uh, this is a hydro flask brush, but it doesn't really matter what brand you have. I like this because it gets into all of our water bottles and our drinking cups that we don't put into the dishwasher. So I use this very regularly. I just leave it on the edge of the sink to drip dry, much like what you would do with your toilet bowl brush. And then it lives under our sink uh, and not in the bathroom. This is a mini version of what you would call or what I would call an iron handle scrub brush, not because it's made out of iron, but because it looks like an iron. And the reason these are good is because they have typically very firm bristles. And as we've now learned, the firmness and material of the bristle will tell you where you should be using these. So the firmer the bristle, the more durable the surface. I would use a brush like this if let's say I had a stain on a concrete floor in my garage and I needed to scrub that area. This would be a really good tool for that. 
This is also really good for cleaning large areas of grout. So you want to use an iron handle scrub brush wherever there's a lot of scrubbing involved. You really need some good friction. You really need to dig in there. Um, this just allows you leverage and it's comfortable. You can get them in different shapes and sizes, but this is something that when I started in the cleaning business, I thought you were supposed to use this when you like clean to the bathroom and clean tubs. And actually this is much more of a specialty tool that I would pull out less often. Unlike the dish and sink brush, something like this you would keep in your kitchen at the sink to get into the nooks and crannies of any dishes or serving pieces or pots and pans that you wanted to scrub clean. Now, this is really a tomato tomato situation. You can choose um, a soap dispensing dish wand with a sponge head. You can choose a sponge. There are lots of different options for what you want to use to clean your pots and pans. A lot of folks like these. And again, I want to talk about the bristles because the bristles make a big difference. If you have, let's say a cast iron frying pan, you're not supposed to use soap and water when you clean that, but you need to lift off say egg or some buildup from steak that you were frying on there. Well, how do you get that off? If you're using a sponge, you might have to work really hard. Whereas if you're using a brush like this that has some pretty durable bristles, you can actually get more leverage and get more cleaning power. The other cool thing with dish and sink brushes is they come with a flat edge like this. A lot of folks don't know this, but this can be used as a bit of a scraper. So you can quickly scrape up any of that built up debris. Some people really like using this as well if they don't want to ruin their nails or if they have sensitive skin, eczema, any or eczema, depending on how you pronounce it, or you know some sort of affliction that uh, makes them not want to get their hand wet. And by no means am I saying that having your nails done or eczema are afflictions, but I think you, you kind of pick up what I'm putting down there. And then we've got here the humble cleaning toothbrush. Now this can be used in a multitude of ways. What I would recommend is for any of these brushes or cleaning tools that you're using, make sure that you demarcate your bathroom tools from your kitchen tools, from your general cleaning tools. This doesn't have to be anything more fancy than something you pick up at a dollar store or even the old one that you are no longer able to use because the bristles are too burned out. You can use this to do little teeny tiny cleaning jobs like cleaning your rings or your watch straps, cleaning the little areas around your sink where you get that hard water buildup. And if you're using it in the bathroom, you can use it to clean areas under the toilet hinges. My gosh, there are so many fun uses for a cleaning toothbrush. The opportunities are endless. Microfiber cloths are one of the biggest innovations in the cleaning space in a very long time. They've completely changed the way that people can clean. And just a brief bit of history, if you don't know, I started a cleaning business here in my hometown of Toronto back in 2006. And when I started that, I was using terrible cleaning cloths. Then I started to talk to janitorial supply companies and I asked for their very best products. That's when they got me into microfiber and I noticed what a difference cleaning with microfiber made. And then in 2011, we started making YouTube videos like Clean My Space. And then in 2015, 2016, we actually came out with our own line of microfiber cleaning tools, which is what you're looking at right here called Makers Clean. And that's because we would talk about microfiber here on the YouTube channel and no one could find it because it was only available at these professional janitorial supply companies. So that's what Makers Clean is. It's a company that brings like premium quality, professional grade microfiber to everyday consumers. First is what we call our OG, our original microfiber cloth. It's a terry weave style. And this is what you're going to see kind of when you see microfiber. This is like the general cloth that you're gonna see. So if you look at it up close, it's kind of got a towel looking weave to it. Um, and what's neat about these is they're absorbent. So these can hold up to eight times their weight in water, meaning that when you clean a surface like this, they don't leave any streaks behind. And the terry also allows it to pick up dirt, dust, debris, and even microscopic things that you can't see like germs. That's what's so cool about microfiber. You can clean using soap and water or just water, but these are great to have kicking around for your everyday dusting and everyday cleaning. If you want to get more granular with your uses for microfiber, uh, this is one that uh, we use. This is probably my second or third most used cloth at home. This is what we call our flat weave 
or a glass and electronics cloth. And that's because without the terry weave, it can't pick up any dirt or debris, meaning it won't leave any micro scratches when you're cleaning your stainless steel, your television, your glasses, your computer screen. So these are really great to have. And they're also awesome for cleaning windows and mirrors. They are perfect at cleaning up grease and fingerprints and marks, but they don't leave any streaks behind. And of course they don't scratch. We know how wonderful it is to have like a plush cloth that can absorb water or liquid uh, and also, you know, be able to polish. And that's why we came out with this. This is the duo cloth. And what this does is it's almost double the weight of this cloth. So it is super thirsty. For example, if you happen to spill uh, a big bottle of pop on the floor or someone spills juice, like we don't grab for paper towels. We just grab for one of these, chuck it down, and it just picks up the entire spill and then you wring it out on the sink. Now, folks also love to use this to clean their cars, their motor vehicles, their recreational vehicles, what have you. So these are awesome cloths for not only polishing, but also for cleaning up big spills and messes. This type of cloth, this is a dish towel or a tea towel, as we like to call it here in Canada. Um, and what's awesome about this is it's got a waffle weave and we made ours extra large because generally when you're cleaning pots, pans, and dishes by hand, you're not just cleaning one or two, and then you want room to actually get your hands dry as well. So that's why we made ours extra large. I always found those tea towels were so small, like you could maybe get one pot and a fork on there and that was it. Um, what's also cool about these is that they they have this waffle weave, this pocket, so that they dry quickly, but at the same time, they're absorbent. So that's why they are called waffle weave, and people use these for all kinds of things. Um, my gosh, the emails that we get from people when they tell us about the uses for their waffle weaves are endless. When you think about cleaning the... F a definite must in your cleaning arsenal is a glove. Now, disposable gloves make a lot of sense if you have like a really grimy one-off job or if you're cleaning like a moldy area and you never want to use those gloves again. The thing you're going to be giving up with these, of course, besides the ability to reuse them, is the durability. So either you might have to double them up or replace them mid-cleaning task. But there is a time and a place for these, so that's why we have them. Now, uh, more importantly, what I use on a regular basis is a really good quality thick pair of rubber gloves. And I look for ones that are sort of rolled up at the top. That's because they are easier to put on and they also help to sort of shield any water from coming right up and going into the gloves. So um, these ones are great quality. We've had them for a long time. And when I look for rubber gloves, I look for ones that have good texture. So that way, if I'm holding something, they don't slip out of my hands. Now, you might want to get gloves in different colors, or if you have gloves that are all the same color, say they're all black, you can get like one of those cool, shimmery Sharpie markers and just label them uh, with what glove is for what area so that you're avoiding cross-contamination. Now, once you're done using your gloves, whether it's for the kitchen or the bathroom, the best thing to do is to give them a cleaning. I just use a little bit of soap and water and wash my gloved hands. Once that's done, I peel the gloves off, fingers out, and I just let them air dry. Once they're dry, I put them away for storage. There are a lot of different ways that you can scrub something clean at home. So let's just talk through the variety of scrubbing tools that you can get your paws on. First, we've got your basic double-sided sponges. Now, Everything here is Scotch-Brite brand. To me, they are the best quality, so those are the ones that I love and recommend. This is the non-scratch scrubber, uh, double-sided, so you have the soft sponge and then the scrubby side. This is the heavy duty, the yellow on green. But these for me have fallen out of favor because I actually find the cellulose side to be pretty gross, so I don't like using these sponges anymore. I prefer, if necessary, using one of their scrub pads. So you've got the non-scratching and you've got the heavy duty. What I would use the heavy duty pad for would be like a really dirty pot or pan if I was cleaning an oven or a barbecue, any kind of heavy duty cleaning job where I'm not so worried about scratching the surface. Alternatively, if I am worried about scratching the surface but I need abrasion, we've got this thicker webbing here and it's a non-scratch finish. So I would use this if I was cleaning a tub, a tile, 
a tub or a tile, just one tile, that's it, or any surface that was grimy and had buildup, but I wanted to avoid scratching. So um, that's really the, the difference between the green and the blue, the heavy duty versus the non-scratch. But again, keep in mind, these are not uh, washable, machine washable, and they are indeed a disposable product. To solve that problem, that's why we at Makers Clean came out with our scrub squares because you get the wiping kind of what you would love about the spongy side on one side and then you get the non-scratch scrub side on the other. These are also machine washable, which all of these are not. These are great for kitchen or bathroom and kind of your everyday scrubbing. When you're done with them, you can chuck them in the washing machine. Typically with these, once they look worn out or they get smelly, you gotta chuck them in the garbage. Then there is the classic eraser sponge, whether you wanna get the branded magic eraser or otherwise. Now, people love this for a variety of reasons, most importantly because it cleans well, but you always run the risk of, is it safe to use on a particular surface? So there are the diehards for this particular product, and I'm not here to argue with you. If you love it, you'll love it. Just make sure that you follow package instructions and you always test in a hidden area first. The other thing to remember when you're using an eraser style sponge is to rinse the area clean afterward because you wanna make sure that there's no residue left behind. This sponge, that's basically what it does. It just sheds residue and that's part of how it lifts grime off. It, it almost deposits like a little bit of a, an abrasive onto the surface and then you can use water to kind of wipe it away. So it is effective, just kind of comes with some caveats. Then you've got steel wool, which is essentially a spun metal version of shredded wheat. And it's great, it's a sleeper product. It's really great at cleaning a variety of different surfaces. In fact, people have even used them to clean their glass shower panels, to clean certain parts of their stovetop when it's been really challenging. The most important thing is to use the super fine version of steel wool. You always wanna use it when the surface is wet, otherwise you can scratch it, and you wanna protect your hands because it's metal and it can poke you. The other type of scrubbing tool that you might wanna consider is sponge on a stick or a dish wand. These are useful if you love the idea of being able to hand wash dishes using a sponge, but you don't actually wanna get your hands wet. My only pet peeve with these is that you constantly have to be buying replacement heads for the sponges, which is why I kind of favor a dish and sink brush over one of these, but you do you. Hey, before we move on, if you wanna save 10% on all Makers Clean products, you can use the code YouTube10 when you check out. If you're a DIY cleaning products fan, then obviously having a multitude of spray bottles is a great investment for you. But here is the thing, it is a Goldilocks situation. It is not easy to find a good spray bottle and that's why I have so many and I test so many. So I don't even have the cheapy ones from the dollar store cause they just bust after a few uses, whether it's the nozzle going or the plastic indenting, they are just crappy. At big box home stores, you can find these heavy duty sprayers, which are fine. Uh, the only thing you might want to keep in mind is that sometimes it's a little too intense to spray. It's like you're, you're using your whole hand just to clean your counter. So especially for folks with mobility issues, sometimes this can be a little overwhelming. Also, the bottle itself is quite big and tall, not the easiest thing to store. Then I want to talk about glass spray bottles. This one comes in a very lovely package. It's probably close to $40, but it's reusable and it's a dark colored glass. But here's the thing. When I use this, it is heavy and it is not comfortable to clean with. From a durability standpoint, sure, it's glass. It looks pretty, very apothecary-esque. It's also got this rubber bottom, which is nice because if you drop it, it's not going to crack but there is always the risk that you run of knocking it into something where it could crack and shatter. To be honest, I love the idea of glass, but I don't love the idea with cleaning with a glass spray bottle. It's impractical. And that brings us to aluminum spray bottles. Cause you might think, Hey, aluminum spray bottles must solve all the problems. But here's the thing with that. You drop an aluminum spray bottle, especially on the bottom, boom, it deforms and it will never sit straight again. So it's always a little bit risky. Personally, I like aluminum spray bottles, but they are not perfect. You also can't gauge how much product you have in there. Sure, you can do the old shake, but really you can't see color. It's, it's, it's really hard 
to sort of figure out what's going on inside an aluminum spray bottle. So I like them, but they're not perfect. Then we've got our reusable uh, product spray bottle. So this one is from a bottle of cleaning vinegar. We've refilled it several times. What ends up happening with this is the nozzle starts to wear off after time. Remember, while these are really good quality bottles and we wanna try to extend the life of them as much as we can, uh, over time the nozzles, the sprayers are gonna start to go. So if you are going this route, just use a good quality one. Make sure that you rinse it really well between uses so that if you're changing up the product inside, uh, you're not mixing anything that it shouldn't be mixed with and that you're also clearly labeling the bottle. When we refill this one, we just refill it with cleaning vinegar, so it's fine. But what I do have here and that I wanna show you are high quality plastic spray bottles. So the reason we end up loving these is because they are clear they have measuring lines on them, so they're easy to make cleaning recipes with. They have a good quality trigger head, so you're not gonna deal with the leaking that you would deal with with some of the less expensive stuff. And these are designed to be used multiple times, whereas again, like if you're dealing with a lower quality uh, sprayer or something that's designed for a one and done use, you're always kind of rolling the dice. These ones come in a couple of different sizes. This one's cool because it actually kind of is designed to fit right inside a caddy and it's very small. Um, so these are the ones that we kind of favor. They will actually be coming onto the Makers Clean website soon. So if you are interested, you can sign up for our newsletter to get notified when these are available. But yeah, we've spent a long time looking for the perfect spray bottle. And as you can see, it's really hard to find one that is 100% and checks all the boxes. I think squeegees are one of the most underrated cleaning tools with the coolest name. And there are two kinds that you're gonna see. There's the regular rubber tip squeegee and the double-sided squeegee. So let's talk about this one first. The rubber tip squeegee is great for cleaning your showers after each use, whether it's a glass shower panel or tiles, even the floor or the tub. This is what's gonna prevent soap scum and hard water stains from building up so that you never have to do a hardcore heavy duty clean of your bathing area again. Very inexpensive and incredible investment of not only the few dollars you have to spend, but the very few seconds you have to spend after each shower. This is also great if you have pets, I'm pointing to my cat, she's off camera, and uh, upholstery or a blanket or even a carpet where there's a lot of pet hair, you simply can wet the tip of this rubber edge you can do short strokes and you will see all that hair come up because the rubber creates a bit of friction with the fabric and then the hair comes up, it's pretty cool. Now, when it comes to double-sided squeegees, these have an entirely different purpose and this is what professional window washers use. You probably knew that. And the reason I love these is because they make the job very quick and efficient. You've got two sides. The short side, you've got a microfiber pad here. What's great is these are removable and machine washable. So once you're done, you can clean them off easily uh, and pop them back on. And then on the other side, you have a replaceable rubber blade. So you would set up a bucket, you would fill it with hot water, squirt of dish soap, some vinegar, mix up the stew, and then you're gonna dip in your squeegee. You're gonna get it nice and sloppy on the window, just like this with the kind of microfiber side, then you're gonna flip it over and you're just gonna go straight back to forth, left to right, to get rid of all of that liquid. It's gonna to fall to the bottom. You can lie a towel right down there and this just makes the job so much easier. Now, the other thing that's really cool about these is that they have universal threads on the bottom. So you can pop these onto extendable poles. That way you don't have to risk your life and go on a ladder You know that's 30 feet high to clean your second story windows. These are a great investment. You're only gonna have to buy them once. They will last you for years and they make interior and exterior window cleaning a breeze. These are two of probably the most unexciting items in my house, but they have a ton of use. The first is a cleaning bucket. And I gotta say, I've had this one for years um, and that's what's kind of good about them. They're heavy duty plastic, they're durable and they get the job done. I use this because we don't have a basin in our laundry room. Um, so I will use this sometimes if I have to soak something for laundry. And the great thing is they're very easy to clean out between uses. So if I'm doing a laundry thing and then I want to mop floors, it's just a matter of rinsing and drying. 
Um, having a bucket is imperative, and depending on the type of mop that you have, you might want to get some sort of uh, attachment for it so that you can wring out the head. But of course, when using our mop, we just take the pads and wring them out by hand. The next thing that's really important to have is a cleaning caddy, especially if you plan on carrying your products around the house and you're looking for a great storage solution. Again, made of heavy duty plastic, caddies come in all sorts of configurations and shapes and styles and colors and you name it. Um, but what's great about these and what's something I don't think a lot of people think about is that when you're using a cleaning product or tool and it's wet on the bottom, let's say you place it down on a surface if that product is not safe to rest on that surface, you can cause a stain. So a cleaning caddy is not only a convenient way to port your stuff around, but it's also a little bit of insurance. So when you're bringing your stuff around, you always have a home base to rest your products back in so that you don't have to worry about cross-contamination or potentially damaging a surface. And as we do in cleaning, we work our way from the top to the bottom, and that's why we are at floor care now. There are three major considerations for floor care, and of course, you need to consider the type of floors that you have before you pick up any floor care tool. If you have soft floor surfaces, you're going to be most interested in getting a good quality vacuum that has a powerful beater bar. That's the brush head with the roller on the inside that can spin around when it's attached to a power source and lift out any dirt or debris or hair that's stuck in a carpet, as well as, of course, small particles. Now, if you have hard floors, you'll have some different considerations to keep in mind. Not only do you want to lift up that dirt and debris, but you also have to think about any dust that settled on the floor and you have to have maneuverability so you can get into corners and sort of those tighter spaces because the debris and the hair and the dust bunnies have much more flexibility in terms of where they can roam. So when it comes to hard floor surfaces, you want to think about having a vacuum with a hard floor attachment as well as or instead a broom. Now I would say that I'd always err on the side of having a vacuum because you're just going to get a better quality clean and with a vacuum everything gets sucked up into the canister whereas with a broom really you're kicking things up and you're only getting the largest particles in the dustpan but the small stuff just recirculates goes back into the air and then settles on surfaces that you've already cleaned. Now vacuums are also important because they come with smaller attachments that can be used to clean upholstery stairs vehicles, corners, uh, you know, light fixtures, all the little, little kind of awkward things in your home where you kind of think power cleaning would be useful. Having a vacuum with uh, attachment tools can be very, very helpful. So that's why I would say, you know, thinking about a vacuum that has flexibility is key. Now for floors, hard floor surfaces, you're going to want to think about a mop. We have this mop. This is our taco shaped mop, the Maker's Mop. It is won awards. It is definitely one of the most popular products on our website. People are crazy about it. And that's because having a good quality microfiber head mop gets the job done using the least amount of moisture. What's cool about this mop is it's got two different kinds of pads that we sell it with. It's got the heavy duty pad for big spills and dirty, dirty, dirty surfaces. And then it's got kind of an everyday pad that you can use on, you know, floors that are relatively clean. It's also got an extendable pole so that if you're super tall like my husband, you can extend it so it's comfortable for you. Or if you're a foot shorter like I am, you can extend it down so that it's ergonomically useful for you. And of course, you can use that um, for getting up high and down low as well for different cleaning tasks. Um, the pads are machine washable. And of course, the taco shape allows you to get into all sorts of corners and nooks and crannies. And it tackles a lot of additional cleaning jobs um, that you might not necessarily think a mop can do. You know, interestingly, I've spent a lot of time doing research on cleaning tools and there have been a lot of innovations in the broom world lately. I know brooms aren't exciting, but uh, you should see how these things can fly these days. Jokes, cleaning joke. Okay, so first of all, um, yes, there's the regular triangle angled broom and that I would say is kind of a tried, tested and true model, but there's a lot of cooler stuff that's out these days. You know, these thinner brooms, they can get into more nooks and crannies. I also love a dustpan that has teeth on it because it can sort of clean the bristles while you're doing your dustpan. Um, and also creative storage capabilities for the dustpan really uh, are quite useful. And these are good just for those super quick cleanups 
or if you have um, you know, a space where you don't necessarily want to bring your vacuum, especially if you have a big clunky vacuum or a central vac, it might make sense to bring a broom there instead. You can also pick up outdoor brooms, usually the corn brooms or those straw brooms. Um, those are really good for outdoors or even large push brooms that you can use to clean kind of those indoor outdoor spaces like garages or patios. Now this is a little handheld broom. It's kind of like a cute little fun accessory, but actually it can be quite useful um, if you have to get into a little awkward corner or if you're just doing a quick cleanup of your kitchen chairs, you know, if there were some crumbs, you know, and you didn't want to go and grab your big broom, this is just a little guy you can keep handy. Um, and it's just nice and easy to tuck away under your counter. Also makes you feel like you're at a fancy restaurant, you know, when they clean off the table with the crumbs afterwards, just kind of a cute little extra to have, but that's just it, it's an extra to have. Anyway, when it comes to floor care and crumb and dust care, this is the variety of tools you should be looking at and considering. And if you were excited by any of the beautiful Makers Clean products that I was talking about in this video, you can go over to makersclean.com and use coupon code YouTube10 to save 10% when you check out. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for our newsletter. That's where we do all of our product drops, our exclusive sale to our newsletter members, as well as share extra cleaning tips and information. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.